Look, with Mark Cavendish, can you give us a bit of an insight into the pressure that he puts onto himself? You know, after I know that he, he puts so much onto his team and has so much respect for his team during the lead-out stages, how much pressure is he putting on himself when he doesn't get those wins like he, did, he didn't yesterday? Yeah, really a lot. I mean, you know, what? whatever critics comes from outside, that's one thing, you know, but I think that's only 10% of what he does to himself. It's crazy. You see that. You see how, how he acts. You see how, you know, how he bites on his teeth and everything. And uh, he tries to overplay that, obviously. But I think the best signal how much pressure went off him when he crossed the finish line was really the way he celebrated. You know, it's, uh, we've got an incredible sport here, you know, and uh, I know why I started this sport. And I started this sport because I love it. I train because I love it, and I want to win because I love it. You know, and uh, but the problem is when you start winning, you know, all that other stuff comes, you know, and you, you kind of... You know, it's kind of hard to ignore. You say, I'm just going to carry on loving it. But, you know, when there's, there's bad things said about you, OK, maybe I give people reason sometimes to, to say bad things or think, you know, bad things. But, you know, it's kind of hard. I'm only 25, you know, and, uh, and you know, uh, you kind of stop enjoying it, especially things like yesterday, you know. Finally, luck was on our side yesterday and I let the guys down. And, uh, you know, I can guarantee now that I'll have... 30, 40 messages when I when I get back, but uh, you know, yesterday I had about 10, and uh, and it's them ones yesterday that matter, the people who, who care about you when you're down, who want to pick you up when you're down, and uh, and I got some great people around me who did that, and I got a great team around me who picked me up last night and uh, and didn't give up, and could have given up today, but they didn't, they gave 100% today, and uh, and it's such a special thing to have to have people like that that uh, Cav, you obviously put so much pressure on yourself. Now, your team, I spoke to your boss, Rolf Aldag, he said he doesn't put any pressure on you. Most of it comes from yourself. It must be a, a, a huge relief to get a win like this. Oh, it's incredible, you know. It's not been the easiest year, but I said in January, you know, uh, it's going to be a hard year up till the Tour de France, but well, the Tour de France is what matters. And, you know, it has been unlucky, I think, the first days for us. Um, but finally, you know, what we said in January is about the Tour de France. It's started now, and... Uh, you know, just because we won one, it doesn't mean we're going to stop here. We've got an incredible group of guys here, and uh, and we'll be going for more wins, you know. But uh, it's finally nice to get it off the ground. Brian Holm told us yesterday the green jersey is impossible. Has, has he, does he have to rethink it now after today? You know, obviously, we were able to get the, the wins started, and I think we'll continue trying with wins now, you know. Uh, like I said, luck hasn't gone our way, but we'll continue with uh, we're trying to win here. So. Do you believe in that? You know, we'll have to see what happens now. I think uh, we still try to get some wins. So. Can you just tell us what was different today than yesterday? Tell us about how you won. I think I went over. I'd like, like, you know, it's hard to get to sleep when you don't win. <laughs> it really is. You go over and over everything ahead, all the possible situations. And fundamentally, I didn't have it yesterday. I went through things and, you know, it was an uphill finish. I remember, I remember <coughs> Kate to go being in my 13, knocking out my 12 and thinking, this is good. And then thinking, oh, maybe it's too good, I got my 11. I went to my 11, I remember thinking to myself, it's too big, but I should be okay, it flattens off. And uh, yeah, and you know, whether or whether or not, maybe I think if I'd been in my 12, I wouldn't be able to carry it on to the end. You know, Pataki was incredibly strong. You know, you just have bad days, it's as simple as it's not. That's what happens in bike racing. Yesterday was a bad day, I didn't have it. And uh, you know, I'm sorry with the guys that they gave they gave everything, you know, they gave, they delivered me perfect, I couldn't finish it, but, you know, it's bike racing, we can't win all the time, and uh, it's kind of hard now that, you know, it's big news when I don't win, rather than big news when I do win, and that's not my uh, my problem, I just want to win, and, and my team wants to win, and uh, and we'll continue to do that, and uh, people can say what they like, really, so. Another hot day, uh, yeah. you seem to handle the heat very well. Um, born in Northern Territory maybe, no, once I get used to it I'm alright, but um, <laughs> you've got to get used to it too, but no, no, hot day and I think it's hotter ones to come, but I know the tour it's, you know, it's hot and hard and that, it's not as hot as it is in Australia, but the stage is 200, 220 k's long here, that's the difference. You seem to be uh, coming in just behind the sprinters, so are you 
uh, positioning, positioning yourself on the back of the sprinter's train? Yeah, across. yeah, trying to get between the danger zone and, uh, <laughs> and be in front of the other GC guys. It's mainly, um, oh, I just said the jitter on things where there was quite a few problems in the roundabouts and in the finals and that. It's a bit of a risk sometimes being back there. So be safe, get in front without sort of spending too much energy and uh, see what we have, have for the mountains. Well, they, uh, tomorrow, like today, I suppose, and then uh, uh, the first uh, Alpine climb. Yep, um, yeah, hopefully like tomorrow, not too much stress, and then um, we're still in the Jura, we're not quite the Alps, but oh, they're, they're hard enough, there'll be a bit of a shake-up in GC, but I think Cancellara might just be able to pass by and maybe keep yellow, so Morzine, I think, is the big, big real shake-up. Uh, I was, beside the, the really hot weather, was quite okay, uh, it was a, a rolling stage, but still, uh, uh, it's never easy, I mean, uh, when you have so uh, high temperature, uh, you still suffer for the heat and uh, you still uh, yeah, consume more energy than when maybe it's 10, 15 degrees less. There will be sh stormy showers tomorrow, there will be. Uh, yeah. I actually never look at the weather forecast because <laughs> I don't have even the time for it, but um, yeah, I'm looking actually also for getting a bit less less temperature like a few degrees less but when the storm is coming then we have to be ready i don't know uh, on the end uh, sometimes the riders they never be happy actually when it's too warm when it's too cold when whatever the weather is but uh, i hope everything goes well that uh, the weather not gonna make some trouble for for the race for the coming days the mountains are coming and uh, yeah Fabian, can you just tell us a little bit about your, your ambition to stay in yellow for as long as possible? Of course, Andy Schleck is the GC rider for the team, but uh, how long do you feel that you can stay in yellow? Well, how many days, I don't know, but um, for sure uh, tomorrow is going to be again a long stage and then the mountains are coming and I think oh, it looks like f f one of those mountain stages will be over for me, but for sure we have... Um, we enjoy those days, and, and but still we have other ambitions also, and that's with Andy. And I think we need to be ready also for the mountains to support him, to help him, and to play our tactics that uh, we can go on and uh, to put Andy on the highest level what we can. Then I think uh, those days uh, we spend energy, but as less as possible, and then uh, yeah, uh, we we will be ready for the mountains. Can you just talk about uh, Frank? Have you spoken to Frank since he left the race? Uh, no, but I, I had some text messages uh, sending and uh, he's home and uh, yeah, for sure uh, pain and uh, watching us and missing us, but we also missing him and it's for sure not, uh, not easy for him. It's for sure not the easy situation that he's home and uh, because he was part of it, but even when he's home, he's still someone from us and make part of it and, uh, and he will send the strength and the force from his house or his home to us and we always use it as, as a use the force.